Today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 402. Are you behind on your retirement savings and what do you need to do to catch up? If you retire in just a few years, will your money last until age 90? Based on the five-year Roth withdrawal rules, do you need to open a new Roth IRA for each Roth conversion? Plus, Joe and Big Al spitball a health insurance, capital gains, and real estate strategy to save more money and have more wealth in retirement. Finally, the fellows revisit the Secure Act rules for withdrawing money from an inherited IRA and Social Security income limits. I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson, CFP, and Big Al Clopine, CPA. All right. Uh, next question here is from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Another Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta. Mr. Anonymous. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, greeting Andy, Joe. And Roll Tide, Big Al? Am I a Roll Tide fan now? What, you Alabama guy? Not that I knew of, but... I think I'll, that might I'll have been some cross it. wires. <laughs> um, I really enjoy your show and appreciate the information you bring to listeners every week. A lot of material I read very often has made me aware that I'm a bit behind compared to others in my retirement savings. I would appreciate it if you could give me a spitball if I'm on track for retirement. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible for Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Personal details. I'm 44. My wife's 46. I drive a 2017 Honda CRV, and my personal beverage of choice is a mojito. My wife and I plan to retire at 62 and 64. Financial details. Household income, $160,000. I've estimated our annual expenses in retirement to be $50,000 in today's dollars, not adjusted for inflation. We have $300,000 saved in a combination of a rollover IRA of two hundred. dollars Excuse me, two hundred thousand Roth IRA of fifty thousand and our Roth TSP of fifty grand. I will have the benefit of carrying health insurance benefits into retirement, and after healthcare expenses and taxes, my pension payout will equal roughly twenty five thousand. The pension will have an annual cost of living adjustment. The pension also carries a fifty thousand survivor benefit for my wife. My benefit for Social Security, should I take it at seventy, is thirty five hundred dollars per month. My wife's PIA at full retirement is fifteen hundred a month. And by that way, that was fifty percent survivor benefit, not fifty thousand dollars. True, could be about the same, but who knows? Yep, <laughs> you're checking it. <laughs> His annual expenses are fifty thousand dollars. I know, but you said you did say fifty thousand dollars survivor benefit. It's fifty. The pension also carries a fifty percent. Yes, you said, survivor benefit. You said fifty thousand survivor it. benefit. All right. Uh, finally, our savings rate is currently 23%. I contribute 10% to the Roth TSP, get a match of 5%, and the rest we contribute to Roth IRAs for my wife and myself. I will plan on converting the traditional IRA dollars to Roth as soon as possible, but I really wanted to know if our plan is realistic. My math tells me that once we draw Social Security at age 70, we're likely to have our expenses covered fully with fixed income, but I believe it's better to oversave than undersave. Thank you for your time and any feedback. Okay, breaking this thing down. He's like, Mike, do I have a good plan? Yeah, so he's just, he's in his early early to mid 40s, mm -hmm. um, making a good income, has about 300,000 already saved, but saving 23%, which is a healthy number to save for the next 20 ish years, which sounds great. Sounds like fixed income, may cover expenses. The plan's fine. I, I here's my comment, maybe, and that is, if you're making 160 now, and if you're saving 23 percent, so let's just call that 40 thousand, right? Just easy math, right? And maybe your taxes are 20 or 30 thousand. If it's 20 thousand plus the 40 you're saving, so that means you're netting 100. So you're spending 100 right now. You are you sure you're going to spend 50? You're going to spend 50. Most people we talk to don't want to spend less. At least they they don't want that as their central plan. I mean if it happens, it happens of course. So I might give that a little bit more thought because at 50,000 you probably still need clothes, you probably still want to go on trips, you probably still want to go out to restaurants, right? You probably want to spoil kids, grandkids. There's there's stuff that you want to think about. I, I at 40, this guy's my age. Yeah. Do you know what you're going to spend in retirement? I have no idea what I spend <laughs> on the weekends. <laughs> well, that's true. That's a different subject. Right? I'm like, what the, what is he, what is he doing? 
like, all right, well, here in my retirement in like 20 some odd years from now, I'm going to spend $50,000 a year. Yeah. Well, he's had a lot of mojitos and thought about it. <laughs> I don't even see a mojito's going to cost some 50 grand. <laughs> well, anyway, that I think that the savings plan is great. The, the starting the income's good, so you can save a lot. You've already got 300,000. Good job. Great. Um, I just think you're going to spend more than you think. That That's my comment. Right. And then, so he, here's what you do is that uh, you take a look at really what you're spending, you know, minus your, your pen, but he, he's, He's retiring at 62 and 64. Of course, this is the, the only show. I don't bring my calculator. Um, so he's got to bridge a gap from 62 to 70 because he wants to take his Social Security at 70. He's going to have a pension. Sure. I don't, I'm not sure. We, we didn't know what the pension is. I just made up the $50,000 number. He said the pension is going to be roughly $25,000. Okay. And that's in today's dollar. So I, I guess it's, right. it's going to be roughly 50000 maybe when he turns 62. But, but let's keep it today's dollars because the expenses are in today's. Well, I see what you're doing. You're, you're trying to figure out what he's going to have. Right. And then what's the shortfall to determine? I mean, at, saving 20000 and he's already got 300000 I mean, he's going to have a good chunk of money. But right. is it going to be enough? is kind of the question. So yeah. 50,000 is probably not your living expense number. So right. here's the math that you need to take a look at is probably inflate your living expenses to hundred grand, then subtract out what your pension's going to be, right? If you're going to take your pension at 62, there's a shortfall. And then that shortfall needs to come from your investments to bridge the gap from that age to age 70. And then from 70, you're going to have your social security, your wife's social security and your pension, figure out what that number is, and then still inflate your overall living expenses by, call it, 3.5%. Yeah, so so I, I did the math really quickly. You start with 300000 you save 40000 a year at 6% for 20 years, $2.4 million. Okay, and what's 3% of that? Okay, 3% of that is 73. Okay, so 73000 is going to come from the portfolio for, right, 62 to 70 He's going to have a higher distribution from that age. Yeah. I mean, so let's just say it's 100 into 2.4. But remember, it can be a little bit higher at the start because you got Social Security coming. That rounds to 4%. It's actually 4, 4.2. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think if he continues to save what he's saving, yeah, um, I think he's going to be okay, even though he's probably misjudged a little bit of his living expenses. And, 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 and trust me, everyone does that. Yeah. Oh, you're, you know, he probably has a spreadsheet. Well, this is what we're going to spend on groceries. This is what we're going to spend on cable TV. Yeah. If, if we have <laughs> white rice, six meals a week and beans, oh. like six, and we have uh, Cheerios for breakfast. Oh, my God. Remember that one guy, the attorney was making like, Eight hundred thousand dollars a year, and they were like flat broke. Yeah, I. And then the wife was like, well, "We should get rid of that Pandora Extra <laughs> that, that you're spending like a and like a hundred dollars a year on." And the first comment, Joe and Al, we're not lavish. Yeah, we're not lavish. Uh, I think you did, you are. Uh, you're spending every ounce of income <laughs> that you have. You're spending nine hundred thousand dollars. If, you, if you're yeah. planning a retirement. For, Saying you're going to spend 50. Right. Good luck. How does that work? Yeah, how does yeah. that work? All right. Uh, thank you. Got a hawk. Writes in from Michigan. Dear Joe and Big Al, long-time listener, first-time writer. Looking for a little spitball with your views. If I can retire in three years. Right. Okay. My wife and I are both 53. Yo. I drive a 2020 Buick Enclave. Oh, is that nice? Kind of sounds nice. Probably. Yeah. And she drives a 2019 GMC Terrain. That sounds like a big vehicle. We live in Michigan and like to sport the local brands, but okay. I do enjoy my favorite beverage from the Rocky Mountains in the ice cold CL. <laughs> CL, right. it's not even Coors Light anymore. <laughs> That's the new name for it. Yeah. Yep. Code name. Yeah. CL or C minus. <laughs> On occasion, what's it? It's like. Yeah, occasionally, every, occasionally every, I got CL once a week. Every weekend? All right. We have two kids. Well, one with recently gradu uh, graduated undergrad and starting his career in a younger son who's a sophomore in undergrad. No pets, unfortunately. 
Okay, here are the numbers. Okay. We gross three hundred thousand dollars per year, spend one hundred twenty. It saved twenty five thousand, no debt. Right? Save twenty five percent. Oh, it's twenty five percent. Assets, two homes worth about nine hundred thousand and three million dollars in total savings. Split up roughly two million in pre tax savings and one million after tax brokerage mix of stocks, I bonds and cash. College costs are already set aside with five twenty nine and prepaid tuition plans. Only fifty k of the after tax savings is in Roth. I appreciate your views and sharing your thoughts. If you think we have enough money to last until 90 years of age. I'm ready to retire in three years. Keep up the great show and laughs. Thanks, Hawk. All right. What do you think? He spends $120,000 a year. Well, okay. So let's say they, they make 300,000. Yeah, so they're, yeah. they're, he's 52 years old, 53, wants to retire two to three years. Okay. All right. So, so that's 55, 56. Okay. Like that. Okay. So, so he's got 10 years of a, a bridge. Um, He's got three million dollars, three million one twenty. What's that math? Well, let's see. I just do three million times three percent is what ninety thousand. Mm -hmm. And that's probably about what you should spend out of your portfolio. So if you want to spend one twenty, you might be just a tad short. The reason we say three percent rather than four percent is you're retiring young, and if you want the money to last till till ninety. 90 then you don't go 4% right out the gate. The 4% rule, which by the way, is no guarantee. It's a rule of thumb. But the 4% rule came about if you're a 65-year-old couple and you lived age 90. So it's a it's a 25-year period, 60% stocks, 40% bonds. Then in all, no guarantee, but in all likelihood, you won't run out of money. So $3 million today, maybe the market's down a little bit, market recovers, he still has yeah. three years. Let's say if he saves 25% of 300,000, that's a pretty good chunk. Yeah, seventy-five k. You know, maybe it's worth three and a half at that point. Three and a half million. Yep. Right. And then you know, maybe this is what I would do, Hawk. Right. At fifty-five, you're gonna tone it down. You're gonna stop making the big bucks, and then go to Home Depot and make twenty thousand dollars and work a couple of days a week. Yeah. Right. Because you're gonna want something to do anyway. You're gonna have to figure something out. Fifty-five is pretty young, and you're gonna live till ninety. Yeah. So yeah. you're halfway home. You got halfway. Half of your life is in retirement, drinking CLs. <laughs> I guarantee you play golf three times a week for three months and go. Well, okay. You get bored. I, I need. I need something else. So maybe you you figure if if you're gonna retire at fifty-five, then think of okay. Well, maybe I work part time somewhere that I really enjoy. Yeah. And let's say you make ten or twenty thousand dollars. Who cares? You just got to bridge a little gap you, between ninety or hundred thousand to one twenty. Right. Because you're a little bit short and you don't want to take out any more than call it two and a half, three percent out of the portfolio. And so let's say you um, make twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Maybe the wife makes ten thousand, whatever, or vice versa. Right. Well, at least that kind of bridges the gap for about maybe five, five or six years. And then that gives you the, the portfolio a little bit more time to, to grow and, and, sure. and do all of that. Um, because with a name like Hawk, what the hell is he going to do? <laughs> He's not going to be like a couch drunk, is he? No, he's going to be. I feel like he's ripped. He's going to be super motivated to do something. Hawk is like, he drives his <laughs> Buick Enclave. He's that's got a, a wife. That's a cool looking car. Yeah, right. I'm just thinking, you know, if I call myself Hawk, it's like, yeah, you're, I got to be a badass. You're, you're a doer. You're not going to sit around. <laughs> Come on. So sit on my ass. Yeah. Not, yeah. Whatever, whatever that passion is. calling me donkey. Whatever that passion is, make a couple bucks doing that. You should be fine. All right. Thanks, Hawk. Get your own retirement spitball. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app to go to the show notes. Then click Ask Joe and Big Al on air and send them your deets. Now, to thank the fellas for your free spitball, make sure that you are indeed subscribed to Your Money, Your Wealth on your favorite podcast app and tell your friends to subscribe too. Subscribe to Your Money, Your Wealth on YouTube and watch Joe and Big Al answer your podcast questions and catch the YMYW TV show. And tell your friends to subscribe there as well. Then follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and share our stuff on your socials. All of these things help us to grow the show, help more people, and keep Joe entertained with new listener comments. We got Scott from Georgia. A lot of Georgia. Yeah, seem to be. Good evening, gentlemen. I've been helped and entertained by your podcast. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Scott. I would like you to spitball my situation. I'm trying not to leave out any important details. My dog years, 
my dog years ago met a car in his no more. Oh, that's oh, sad. Yeah, he kind of did it as like a poem. <laughs> well, you just have to think about what it means. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, my cat fine, but is a talker. I drive a small pickup rarely as I'd like the more comfortable Camry late model, of course. Please use the name Scott when referring to me. Thanks. Was there another name we could have uh, used? I don't yes. Know. Scott is an <laughs> alias. Oh, got it. Okay. Oh. Scott from Georgia. All right. Details. I have no debt at this time. Yearly income, approximately $100,000. I plan to do some traveling overseas between 60 and 65 years of age. I'm a United States veteran. Thank you for your service. Possible life expectancy, 87 years. <laughs> oh That's God. pretty good. Which month, do you know? <laughs> you know, I, are you going to live to 87 or 85? 80, 84 and a half, maybe? I'm 58 years old and single. Uh, planning to retire mid year 2023. Expenses, minimal basic living expenses, $33,000 or less. Income, he's got a pension of 24 grand. Dividends, 5,000 comes from my brokerage account. Social Security, 19,000 at age 62. And rental income of $8,000. Yeah, got it. Got brokerage account assets, 350. 401k before tax, 775,000. 401k. 86,000, Roth IRA, 61,000, HSA, 31,000, Money Market, 60,000, I bonds, 10 grand, rental property, 50,000, home value, 160. Yeah. So just for your benefit, I added the liquid assets 1.4 million. 1.4 million. All right. Way to go, Scott from Georgia. Yeah. Good job. Um, I would like to keep my taxable income about $34,000 in order for me to be eligible for VA health benefits and or to be able to use the Affordable Care Act in early retirement for six years between 59 and 65. I will pull money as needed from non-taxable brokerage account first. Georgia at 62 years does not tax retirement income until 35,000. Georgia at 65 years does not tax retirement income until 65,000. After 65 years, I will try to limit taxable income to the top of the 15% tax bracket. I'm waiting to utilize the benefit zero tax on capital gains and 0% tax on dividends. I am planning on taking Social Security later in life, maybe 67 or 70 years old. I have about $120,000 of capital gains on the S&P 500 stocks in my Vanguard brokerage account. I would like to realize the brokerage account capital gains over time at the 0% tax rate. My thoughts are to give close family up to $20,000 to buy I-bonds for me this year at 9.62%. I can receive it back as an inheritance or when sold. It has been recommended to realize capital gains first before doing Roth conversions. I plan on investing cash in investment accounts before retiring. Good time now as the market's falling. I have a piece of property with my, with my and father's name on it, but paid for but I paid for it. It will sell at a loss of $15,000. Will I be able to take the tax deduction? Please, what are your thoughts? They will be much appreciated. So what are we doing? Spitballing the whole thing? I don't know. I just, just go back to the start. Interest in oh, I, I would like you to spitball my situation. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll answer the very last question because <laughs> it's, it's, it's fresh in my mind. Will you get a tax deduction? So you got a piece of property with your name and your father's name on it, but you paid for it. So uh, I, it depends what kind of property it is. If it was purchased for investment, yeah, it, it would be an investment property. If it's a piece of land, it's a capital loss. So you can only do it against capital gains, right? And if it's a rental property, then uh, when you have when you sell rental properties at a loss, there's a special rule that allows you to take ordinary income on rental property losses, but capital gains on rental property gains. So I don't know which it is, but uh, assuming it's for investment purposes, yes, you could get a tax deduction. Whether you have to split it with your father or not, the fact that you paid for it, that, you know, is it 50-50 on the deed? You know, I don't know. There's some things you might want to consider with your accountant. All right. <clears throat> Georgia, 62 year does not tax retirement income. So Okay. You pull money out of a retirement account at up to $35,000 and not pay any tax, or is that pension income? Um, what do you think? Let me get caught up here. Retirement income. I'm going to say pension because that's what that's Hawaii, which I know. 
and Hawaii doesn't tax pension income, but does tax IRAs. Right. I could be wrong, but that's that's how I'm going to go with this. Yeah, that's what I thought too. 65 does not tax retirement income up to 65,000. So Right. And then after 65, um, try to stay in the 15% bracket. Okay. I like, I mean, he saved a ton of money, doesn't spend any money. Yeah. And, you know, what's annoying to me is that people that have millions of dollars, you know, they, I know this, what you're going to say. This whole the, the Affordable Care Act. And, yeah, let's, and, let's get all the benefits we can, even though they weren't really designed for people like me. Right. You, you got millions and you <laughs> using the Affordable Care Act, whatever. I mean, I, that's the law, that's it. the rules, and that, you can that do whatever you want. That, that's right. And, 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 and so like the Affordable Care Act, just to explain how that works. So if, you're, if your income is low, if you're in the po- poverty range, then you can get government assistance to pay for your health insurance and veteran veteran benefits, similar concept, right? I, I don't know as much about veteran t- uh, benefits, but I'm, I'm assuming it's the same concept. And so if you arrange your affairs to have artificially low income, which you can do, you can qualify for these benefits, but then you can't really do capital gains because that messes you up. You can't really do Roth conversions. Right. He's got $125,000 of capital gains. And so it's like, well, here, if I sell this at you know, the time I need the cash, Right. Then that's going to blow me up into a higher tax bracket, and then that hurts my VA benefits, or that hurts my Affordable yeah. Care Act in regards to health insurance. Right. So he's trying to blow out of the one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars before he does Roth conversions. Right. So you got a hundred fifty thousand dollar gain in the S and P five hundred fund, and um, so he's got one point five million total, and he's got seven hundred thousand dollars in a four hundred one k plan. Right. Yep. Okay, so in and he's I forget how old. How old he's got? He's fifty eight. Fifty eight. Okay, so he's got let's call it fifteen years until RMD age. Uh, correct. Okay, so seven hundred thousand is going to be worth two million bucks, right? Yeah, and I his RMD that. is is going to be eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, so then he's going to have his um, pension, Social Security, right? And what tax bracket do you think Scott's going to be in at that point? Pretty high. Yeah, probably. Uh, and he's single. So I'm going to say that with the tax rates coming back to what they were, either 25 or 28% bracket. So he's I, got I think that, 25, 35, what he's got 40, he's going to have 120,000 of income right. at 72, single. Single. So right. he might be in the 28% tax bracket. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Right. And even if we're off a little bit, it's still a high income. Right. So he's doing all these maneuvers to save a couple of bucks on health insurance when he's going to blow everything down the road, right? Yeah, that, that's the problem with this strategy. It's like, if it's if if you should be doing a Roth conversion, maybe that's what you should be doing. If you should be rebalancing and paying a little bit of capital gains or even paying no tax on capital gains because you're in the currently the 12% bracket, then maybe you should do that instead of trying to get this benefit that that I get that you could qualify for it. But, but and this, I guess this is a moral issue. Sh- should you? <laughs> I mean, it depends on, upon your feeling. I'm just going to tell you, me personally, I would not. I don't think this is what the, how this was intended, intended yeah. but I get it. It's available and, and people want to take advantage. I, that's just my own personal opinion. And, and so how Alan and I would look at this is, at, you know, look at the added premium that you would pay by doing the appropriate tax planning so you don't blow yourself up in the future. Right. And count that as a tax, right? Because you could say, hey, I'm going to zero myself out. I'm going to pay very little health insurance. I'm going to pay very little tax. And if you... It's going to be low for quite some time, and then it's going to spike huge on you. Right, because you didn't do the Roth conversions and the and the capital gains. Right, because harvesting. his IRAs is going to continue to grow tax deferred. He's not yeah. going to pull any money from that, right? And then he's going to play the capital gains game, that which is fine. And it's like, okay, well, let's keep deferring this, kicking the the problem down the down the road. Yeah, and he's going to live to eighty seven. Right. So. So if if I looked at this as a strategy of saying now until age 87, what is the cheapest way to do all of this? Right. And what is going to be the most for me? And at the end of the day, the most for my beneficiaries, charity, or wherever that the money wants to go to, or if he wants to spend the last dime and, and bounce the last check. Sure. I think there's a better strategy by looking at multiple years at a time versus kind of looking at this in a silo and saying, you know what, 
I want to get this benefit w- right now. Or, 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 you know, same thing with like Irma. Hey, I don't want to do this because I'm going to pay a little bit extra in, in Part B premiums. We'll count that as a tax. And I, I'm not guaranteeing you, but if you look at this longer term, you're going to save more money. You're going to have more wealth. You're going to be able to do more things and have more flexibility. And if tax rates go sky high, or if you have an emergency where you got to pull a lot more money out, you're going to have the flexibility versus doing this strategy to keep yourself in ultra low brackets in paying zero in health insurance until everything goes through the roof on you. Yeah, it does kick the can down the road to where your taxes will be a lot higher later, right? So you just have to think about that. I will say one thing though, health insurance is expensive. So I do understand why people want to do this. Oh, for sure. I get the strategy, but don't be short-sighted with it. Yeah, right. All right. Thanks, Scott. Uh, Jason writes in. It's Jason. Yeah. We don't know where he's from. Oh, yeah. He didn't say. All right. Hello. He's lucky to live in Colorado. That's where he's from. Oh, see, I guess Andy didn't read. <laughs> I drive a 2004 Subaru, drink sour beers, and have a mutt. Lucky to live in Colorado. So this is Jason from Colorado. Yes. Love the show. I have an existing Roth open in 2020. I'll be 59 and a half in 2026. So five-year rule in 59 and a half will be satisfied whenever I get around to using the funds after that time. No need for them for the foreseeable future. I've heard you mentioned that each conversion has its own five-year clock if I'm over 59 and a half. Does that mean that if I want to convert stock in a down market now that I need to open a new Roth IRA, and if I want to do more next year, I need a third and so on, or can I just convert all of it into the existing Roth? If the answer is the former separate Roths, can I consolidate them as they each hit the five-year mark? Thank you. Um, Okay. So five-year clock again here, Big Al. I know you love this and it is complicated. And we probably probably answered this question about every fourth episode. Sure. Nevertheless, it comes up a lot because it's it's so hard to understand. So there's two five-year clocks. That's right. See how you do. You're really good at this. <laughs> You're better than I am. So go for it. Uh, all right. There's a five year clock um, in regards to Roth IRA contributions. Okay. okay. So let's say if you're under 59 and a half and over 59 and a half, let's okay. just start there. Yeah. I like the differentiation. Okay. So if you are under 59 and a half, all right, what happens? You have to have the earnings season in the Roth IRA for five years or until you turn 59 and a half. Whichever is longer. Whichever is longer. Right? That's that's for the earnings part. Earnings part. So if you do a conversion at 59, right, you have to wait five years for those earnings to come out tax-free. Five years or 59 and a half, whichever is longer. Right. Does if that it, all make sense? Yeah. If that's your first Roth if IRA If that's your first, ever, first yes. Let's start there yes. too. So if you've never established a Roth IRA and you're 59 years old, you have to wait five years to get the earnings out tax-free. However, the the contributions are 100% tax-free with FIFO tax treatment. Whatever you put in, you can always take out no harm, no foul, no matter what age. On a conversion or contribution? Contribution. Contribution. Okay, I agree with that. Okay. So once again, contributions. Contributions. 59 and a half. Or five years, whichever is longer, to get the earnings out of the Roth IRA tax free. If you've never established a Roth IRA before, the five year clock starts on January 1st, the date that you contribute to, um, or the year that you contribute to the, the Roth IRA. Okay, so, I, so I'm 30 years old. I contribute to my IRA, a Roth IRA, I should say. Yes. Um, in December. Okay. Right. So my clock starts on January 1st of that year. Correct. I did a $3,000 contribution. Yes. Six months later, Armageddon. I need that money. Correct. So I can pull the $3,000 out, no penalty, even though I'm 30. I'm not 59 and a half. That is correct. But the 3,000 grew to 3,300. Correct. I can't take that 3,000 out. I can, but then I have to pay taxes and 300. Penalty. The 300. Three, sorry, 300. I, the $300, I, I, I can take it out, but I have to pay income taxes and a penalty. Correct. All right. So the growth is the part that you can't have for five years. When it comes to contributions. Right. When it comes to contributions. And the five-year clock starts with the first dollar that hits the first Roth. 
So if he's continuing to make contributions, you don't open up separate Roth IRAs. Right. And so right. That, that's one thing. So so in terms of Roth IRA, if you have 100 Roths, it's counted as one. That's the aggregation rule. So you don't need 100 Roths. The first one, you got six of them. It's just like you have one. It doesn't matter. So conversions have a different five-year clock. The conversion is each conversion that you make, if you're under 59 and a half, okay, is that each conversion would have its own five-year clock clock on the conversion amount so on the on the principal on the conversion correct because if i do a roth conversion that means i'm paying the tax on the money that i convert and so let's say i'm 50 years old and i do a roth conversion of ten thousand dollars i pay the tax on the ten thousand dollars now i have this roth conversion of 10 grand and then three months later armageddon hits and i need the ten thousand right and i pull the ten thousand out of the roth ira well, the Roth IRA rules say that it's FIFO tax treatment, first in, first out, because I've already paid taxes on the money. Yeah. So then I take the ten thousand dollars out, but I'm fifty. So what did I avoid? Well, you 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 didn't avoid the penalty. Right. I, well, I avoided the the penalty if that were the rules, right? Yeah. yeah. So the IRS, because this is how the rules were, right? And then they were like, hey, you know what? People are, are avoiding the, the premature penalty of the 10% penalty by taking the money out prior to 59 and a half right. because they could just convert the money, pay the tax, and then pull it out the next day and next avoid day, it. I, oh, look, I got away with, with the penalty. Yes. So they're like, you can't do that. So now there's a five-year clock on the conversion if you're under 59 and a half. So each conversion that you make, if you're under 59 and a half, have its own five-year clock until you turn 59 and a half. And then all of a sudden, there's no five-year clock anymore for conversions. Correct. On, on the amount converted. Then there, all of a sudden, the five-year clock kind of disappears. And let's <laughs> say you did the co contribution <laughs> 10 years ago. Well, your five-year clock now, if you're over 59 and a half, is already satisfied by the first dollar that hindered the contribution 10 years ago. That's true. So, Okay, so Jason I says he's going to be 59 and a half in 2026. Okay. He wants to know if he needs to continue making opening new Roths for every conversion. So the answer no. there is no. No. He'll that's just continue to convert. If he wants to pull the money out prior to 59 and a half, then that's where he's going to have the issues. But he says he doesn't need the money, so don't worry about it. Yeah, so after 59 and a half, the only five-year clock is if you didn't have any Roth for five years, now you got to wait five years till your first Roth. And it goes back to the January 1st of the year you did the first conversion or contribution, right? So you got to wait for that period to get the earnings. You can always take the principal out, which after 59 and a half is either your contribution or your conversion. And how the IRS looks at this is that what comes out first is going to be FIFO from contributions, then it's the conversion amount, then it's the earnings on the contributions, then it's the earnings on the, the conversions. So it's four tiers. And I, I have no <laughs> idea how they're going to calculate this, uh, but <laughs> that's what it states in um, the old rule book. Okay, that's sort of clear. Okay. If it's not at all clear to you, I can understand. A visual aid might help. Learn the where, when, and how of taking money out of your Roth IRA when you download our free guide on the five-year rules for Roth IRA withdrawals. Your age, contributions, conversions, and the IRS order of Roth IRA withdrawals all impact your access to that money in your Roth accounts. So this is one guide you'll want to keep handy. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app to go to the show notes and get down. Downloading. I uh, got Greg. He writes in Big Al from beautiful Temecula, California. Okay. Hello, Big Al and plain old Joe. Start plain? Yeah, That's, start I know you you like that. I think you might have said something incorrect on episode 398. I doubt it, Greg. <laughs> you said if you were a non-spouse inheriting an IRA, you have 10 years to close the account. That is correct. But you then said you could wait until the 10th year to take all the money. I think the IRS has said their interpretation of the laws that you have to take a distribution every year. With a question mark. I have not seen that interpretation, Alan. Have you? No, I've seen the SECURE Act changed how this all works. They took away the stretch and they said it had to be paid out within 10 years, but you could mix and match any year you wanted to, including waiting till the 10th year. Correct. I remember 
prior to the stretch IRA. Yeah, then then you had to take a, a, a RMD every year. That was the stretch, but then prior to that, you had to d- deplete the account in five years. Yeah, that right. was pre two thousand. Right, that's right, exactly. So and that had the same kind of laws there too. Yeah, it you, you could do it, you could do it all at one year if you wanted to. Correct. So they they just continue that rule from twenty years ago. Yeah. So Greg, I don't know what. Yeah, if we're, you, we're standing by what we said. If you know something else, send it. To yeah, us, why don't but, you send us like some proof? Yeah, I mean, I, this is um, just give us like a a, a code number. <laughs> that would be helpful if you if or, you're, you're going to combat us or or uh, you know something written by the IRS yeah, yes. or a publication, not something you saw on the internet and you assume it's true. Yeah, I'd listen to this other stupid podcast probably, and they were saying <laughs> something wrong. We got hello, Andy. Now, Joe, Jim from Santa Cruz. It's taken me a couple of months to recover from Joe completely tearing my last email to shreds. Do you do that? Not now. I don't. You don't remember that? No, I don't recall. Hmm. But I figured out how to recover. This time, my question is directed primarily to Big Al. All right. Okay. I'll, go. I'll do my best, Jim. I ask, of course, on behalf of my good friends, Jack and Diane, who officially retired on June 30th. Jack is delaying Social Security, but Diane began taking Social Security distributions in July. She recently began performing some part-time work, less than 15 hours a week, because Diane listens regularly to YMYW, and she's heard this topic discussed before. She mostly understands the SSA's special earnings limit rule but she's unclear about a couple of things. Big Al, can you help her out? Okay, what's the question? All right, Diane understands that SSA allows her to earn $1,630 a month while drawing benefits. She exceeded that amount during the first six months of the year. How does she avoid being penalized by the SSA for the excess earnings prior to her retirement? Okay, I'll take that one. So that's uh, same as... 19,560 per year. So that's how much you're allowed to earn without without having to pay back some of your social security benefits uh, when you're if you take your benefits before full retirement age, right? There's a different number of the year you turn full retirement, but let's just go with this for now. And so if you make more than those amounts, then for every couple dollars over, you got to pay a dollar back. And what the IRS, I mean, what the Social Security Administration does is the following year, when you're receiving these benefits, they say, well, you got paid too much. So instead of you paying you whatever number they were paying you, $800 a month, now they're only going to pay you $600 a month because we're going to we're going to get our money back. Right. And so that's you don't necessarily get penalized. And the, the cool thing about this is if you took benefits that you had to pay back, they recompute it as if you never took it. So does that sound right, Joe? You're the social security. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. I don't know. <clears throat> the only thing is that is, yeah, um, that's good enough. Good enough answer <laughs> for, for, for Big Jim. All right. Um, we could get more technical, but yep. we're not. Keep it at a high level. Yeah, just because it's Jim from Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Would contributions to Diane Solo 401k reduce her earnings for SSA purposes? If so. Can those contributions be made up to Jan, uh, April 15th of next year? Thanks, as always, for your great show. Jim from Santa Cruz. All right. So that's kind of that's a good question. So Diane uh, apparently has a business that she can do a solo 401k. If you have your own business, you can set up your own 401k, individual 401k, solo 401k, same name for the same thing or different names for the same thing. Your When you put money into the solo 401k, it does not reduce your your earnings, your social security earnings, because the way that that's computed is your net business earnings without regard to that. So no, that does not reduce your, your business earnings. However, like let's say Diane needs a new computer, right? And printer and whatever. And that costs $3,000, whatever it is. You can, she can buy that in December, as long as it's put into service by that date, you can write off the entire amount towards income. And, and that does reduce your self-employment income, reduces your 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 earnings from your business, reduces your self-employment. And then maybe by doing stuff like that, you could stay under the 19,560. So you can do that. So for those of you that are self-employed, try to load up on expenses before year end. And and it could be capital equipment like desk computers. And with uh, uh, 
with the first year write off, right? You can you can go at section one seventy nine. You can write that off dollar for dollar. There you go, Jim. Now you ask Big Al on that. <laughs> Get ready for Roll Tide, Cars, The Hawk Show, and Sour Beer in the derails at the end of the episode. Stick around. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Click the Get an Assessment button in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257 and schedule a free financial assessment at a date and time convenient for you no matter where you are in the country. We've got six offices. Chances are one of the experienced financial professionals at Pure will be able to identify strategies to help you create a more successful retirement. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. Roll Tide, Big Al? Am I a Roll Tide fan now? What, you Alabama guy? Not that I knew of, but I think that might have been some cross wires. Uh, Catherine is a wonderful lady in our office. I I don't dislike roll time, but I can't say I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I went to the University of Florida, so right. Well, he lives in Atlanta, doesn't live in Alabama. No, and he's going roll tide, big (laughs) out. I don't know, maybe he's whatever. My, My kids, by the way, went to San Diego State and. University of Colorado and Boulder. So I'm fans of both those teams. No. And I went to University of California, San Diego. No football team. I got gypped. The, the, the Tritons. I got I got nothing. Yep, Tritons is right. Um, not, I, the, not the Titans, the Tritons. The Tritons. GMC, Buick, and Clay. Is that <laughs> like, that's a truck, isn't it? Uh, I will check for you. That's like... Or SUV? Yeah, like Matthew know. McConaughey. We might, you know... He was doing Lincoln. Oh, it's not Buick? No. Okay. <laughs> GMC, that's kind of, you know, they live in Michigan. His name's Hawk for it. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Enclave yeah. is, a, is nice an SUV. Yep. Yeah. It looks a like a Lincoln. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's kind of, all right, Hawk. That's kind of <laughs> badass name. That's a great name. I'm going to change my name. <laughs> so that's, I was thinking I would change my name. Oh. So we'll, we'll be the Hawk show. <laughs> this is Hawk. Oh, I'm Hawk. Yeah, yeah. I'm Hawk. Sour beers. Right? You like sour beers? Oh, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, I I uh, have very rarely had them. I can't say that I like them. I like regular beer. What the, what is a sour beer? I don't know. It's just it's it's a more sour. It's got it's more sour taste. Well, you take a beer, beer and sour sweet and sour mix or something. something. I like don't a, know. Like I don't know how they make like it. A whiskey sour? It's not my. I don't like it. Got it. It's Indian an intentionally stuff. acidic, tart, or sour taste. They're actually brewed that way. Oh, Traditional okay. sour beer styles include Belgian lambics. Really? One of my favorite beers is a Belgian lambic, and it is not sour, so uh, I don't know. Maybe you like okay. sours and don't know it. <laughs> Maybe that's it. <laughs>